Okay, folks, uh, we got three things to do today. The first one is I've, I've got Chinaco. I've been riding the Ramal a couple times for, for minutes. So I want to show you where we're at. And uh, to me, the, the very first thing that has to happen is I did it outside where he was nice and calm going up a, a slight grade just so I could make contact. And all he did was turn his head a little bit and try to figure out the pressure on his back of his jaw. He couldn't understand what was going on. Well, then I rode home in the Bosalito. Okay, so then I, I, I stood on the ground and did it. I, I'd done that before. And anyway, now he, he's figured it out. So the goal is, is to start thinking about self-carriage where the horse walks backwards on a loose rein. Now you got to watch real close to my hand to see what a loose rein looks like. Then I'm going to ride forward and then you know all the cues I use. So I'll just stop now, I'll sit up, take my legs off and lean back and then give the rein back when he, his feet start moving. So he's going to walk backwards off of my seat and not my hand. Now I haven't heard the cricket. So now I'll stop, set the rein down and he runs a cricket. So what he's telling me is, is that I'm putting my tongue against the bit. I don't understand what's going on. So I will do this exercise until he rolls the cricket walking backwards and then I can move on. Start doing lateral work. So I'll incorporate everything I'm going to do until I feel comfortable is it going to be at a walk. So one more time I stop, I take my legs off and I'm walking backwards and I give him the rein. Like a lot of things, this is more on me than it is him. Now, there's the rain, there's the cricket. So we're getting down to the nut cutting. It's very, very subtle. And that's what makes, to me, is makes a high level bridle horse. And while we're on that note, the other day I did a video of me talking while I rode, telling what I did. Well, I didn't want to overwhelm anybody. I'm just saying, what I do with my skeleton. So if you ever think it's, well, I can't push all them buttons mentality, don't think that way. If you have somebody that you admire, a good horseman, especially working cattle, watch their body and you're gonna see that they do what I talked about. They just don't talk about it. So just bear that in mind that that's part of the deal of riding off your skeleton instead of your hand. So. I'm going to pick up my hand from here to here and put an arch in my spine and take my legs off. Now I'm going to bump with both legs. I just did. Now he's walking backwards until I drop my legs down. Now I'm going to try to breathe him into the cricket. Now I'm not putting my hand down this time. This is why this is so... I don't know what you call it. It's finite. We're getting down to the deal. There. That's with my hand here. There's the total release. Okay. That's going to go on until I feel good about it. And my friend Will, congratulations on that beautiful horse you got in Australia. And then Bill. There's Will and then there's Bill up in Mariposa. You're doing good with your horse. I know you are. I got to visit with you. So next is the cattle working deal. And what I want to show today is one of the biggest mistakes people make. And I'm going to show you wrong first and then I'll show you correct. And the, the, the big mistake people make is they ride, if they want to turn a cow back the other way, they go too far. Because they think their body has to turn the cow. I'll show you the position. This is the wrong position. The wrong way is to ride all the way up to where your body is in line with the eye. Right here. That's too much. So what happens is if you want to turn a cow to the right, for example, what they'll do here is they'll back up and duck out behind you because you overwhelmed them. You overdid it. So now I'll put him back in position. There are the crickets rolling as he backs up, incidentally. So now what I want to show you, the reality of working cattle is the horse's head reaches the eye before you do. And that's how you actually turn a cow. 
then that's why you're not going to be late when it does turn. You can be there to do whatever it is you want to do. If you go all the way to your body, you're late. They're going to leave and you just failed. So now I will show you the correct position. And that would be right there. My horse's head just went past the eye. And that's all it takes for a cow. So that's something to remember when you're in the corral and you keep blaming something. I have no idea what. But the fact is, most people override cattle. That's why they have trouble. So now on the same note, if I want this cow to just bear off to the right, and I'm back here, I would simply come in at a stronger angle and right about here because it's got all this vision if you ever look at a cow their ears the way their ears are made they can't see behind them very well it blocks their vision well that's the ultimate prey animal so when you get farther away at a 30 degree uh, damn near 45 now that cow even if its ears back watching you it can still see with its eyeball so I'm gonna ride to the eye bam Right front foot starts to move, I take the pressure off, and I move over. Now it stops, I hit it again. If it's doing what I want, I take the pressure off. Now, this is how you would stop a cow. It started to turn, so it's going to the right. I need to stop the cow. The best way to stop a cow after you've moved it is to ride away from the cow. That's one of the ways. The other way is just simply back away from the cow. And the farther away you get, the less pressure, the quicker they'll stop. So the other day, me and the crew, three of us, two ladies were with me to help. They sat still, and I brought 100 cows, fresh cattle that were kind of trotty. I took them to a water trough about a quarter mile away at a walk. They never got out of a walk. The reason is because I was no less than 300 yards away from that entire herd once they started moving. I got as close as I needed to to get them to move. As soon as they did, I got out of their way behind their eye and they walked to the water trough. Okay, okay folks, the eye would be a hard right turn. If I just wanted a horse, a cow to move, I would ride right straight towards the shoulder, which is this. Now that just gets them to bend. If I just want them to go ahead in a straight line, I would start them on either hip, the left hip, then I would step over and push on the right hip. And what's really going on is they're looking back with their ears and they'll see left eye, right eye, left eye, right eye, and they'll start walking straight. As soon as they start walking straight, then you take the pressure off. But riding directly straight behind a cow is a tough thing for a cow until they get used to you because they can't see you. If I'm if I'm in a pasture and I need to move a cow somewhere and we're having to get to the corral and I got help, which I very seldom do, then I say, you got the left eye, I got the right eye. So that, I'm gonna be sitting over here and we're gonna go straight across the pasture and my partner's gonna be equal distance on the left eye and we're gonna go right straight out of there. If the cow starts to turn, it's on him to push the eye, not me. If it turns right, it's on me to push the eye, not him. On that note, if it starts turning to the left, I have to say to myself, myself, are you pushing too hard on the right eye? That's why you always need to stay even. There's a balance point. It's all about pressure and release. So, now, I wrote the list of names down, and my bride put them up on the, on the deal there. And incidentally, she's doing real well post-op. And um, I got a reply, and it just absolutely made my day. And one of the names was Johnny Jones, and a man got a hold of me that knew him, and his father knew him. And they, I think, ran cattle together down by Raymond. So this is all west of Yosemite is what I'm talking about. I was in Coarse Gold, and Raymond was to the northwest, I think. Anyway... Johnny Jones, people want to know why their names are there and what was their impact. All right, he didn't teach me cannon departures. What he did was when I was a little kid, it was all community. It's a new concept in housing. And everybody worked together. When somebody was sick, food showed up. Okay, Johnny Jones was a straight-up cowboy. 
who helped with the rodeo. We had an annual rodeo in Coarse Gold and everybody in town helped put it on. My grandpa was, you'd hear the announcer say, Ed to the buck and shoots. That means some horse kicked the board out. It was all wood, there was no panels. Whole wood arena, pretty cool. Johnny was in charge of the wild cow riding also. And so all us young wannabe world champions, he put me on my first wild cow and I nodded my head and then I had to get up so they could shut the gate because I'm not any good at that kind of stuff. But Johnny was real good about helping the kids and the women would make coleslaw in a bathtub with a wooden oar. That's how many people showed up at this rodeo. My cousin would dig a ditch with his dozer and he'd bury beef. They'd put tin over it and throw dirt on it. The men was a good excuse to sit up all night and drink and visit and us kids ran around like idiots in the dark. So somebody might remember the course school rodeo, but Johnny, what he did to me was to validate my idea of wanting to be a cowboy. When I saw him as a seven-year-old kid, I'm like, I can do this. So that's why Johnny's name is on there. And thank you for the folks that got a hold of me that knew him. You know, one thing about Johnny Jones is he'd come out of the brush, which up there it's Buckbrush and Manzanita. And people always said it was interesting. He'd come out of working cattle all day, get off his horse, take his Levi jacket off, his bat wings off, and he had a crisp white shirt on. And he always had a little scarf. And he looked like he's ready to go to town. So nobody could get over that. Now, the Paul Harvey, there's two things. When Johnny was a little kid, his last name was Alberta. He wasn't buying that clan. He quit him, left, ran away, and changed his name to Johnny Jones. The second thing is that the entire town was in a buzz over, was in the 60s. His wife, Sandy, who he and Sandy at the community hall dances were the best jitterbug couple on the floor. In the 60s, their ranch was right by the highway. Her and her daughter got up, walked to the highway and got in a hippie van and disappeared, never to be heard of again, ever. So there's your Paul Harvey. Thank you. There you go. All those years of work are paying off. <laughs>